Hello and welcome to the video. This is a follow-up to a video that I did a little while ago, well not that long ago actually, uh, talking about logic conditions and global functions in iNav. And in that example what I did was set up my radio so that I could flick one three position switch and select three video powers, uh, transmission powers for the video system for the FPV. Now the nice thing is, is that the power of logic conditions, LCs, is much much bigger than that so in this one it's going to get a little bit technical so if you don't understand things like boolean logic and stuff like that you know what just kind of tap out this video um, i'm going to try and make it as easy to follow as i possibly can uh, but i know some people even struggle to follow along with the last one and that's partially due to the fact that this is new stuff that's introduced in inav although it's fantastically powerful it's kind of like OpenTX, in which you know you kind of need to know what you're doing in order to figure everything out and that is the same in here although we have some kind of graphical interface for the logical conditions we don't have a graphical interface for global functions and again, very briefly, just to recap, and if you haven't watched that previous video, there's a link in the description. Please go and watch that one first. Otherwise, you won't stand hope of following along with this. Logic conditions are like software switches that can actually detect different things happening. And then the global functions are the things that then the switches can turn on and off. And they can do things like change video transmitter power. Now, it can also do other things as well. It can do things like drop flaps when you're in a particular flight mode below a particular airspeed. And there's loads of cool stuff. But this video is all about exploring more of this and getting into a little bit more of the weeds. Now, I've actually had to make myself this little sheet uh, which is where I've had to figure stuff out to make this happen. And again, I need to say a massive thank you to Pavel Spikowski, who has been helping me through this. Um, it's been a very long time since I've had to sit down and work out Boolean logic. Um, but uh, I've kind of got there because he was kind of going, oh, no, nope, that won't quite work. And eventually we got there in the end. So a big thank you to Pavel. Go and check out his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. Go and click on watch a few of his videos. He's an iNav developer, a lovely guy, and somebody that needs to get more viewers than he actually is because he does a really good job. Now, as we looked at last time, you can use global functions to change the power levels. Last time we were doing a three position switch in a low, mid and high position, uh, sent one of three power levels to your video transmitter. And you use the on-screen display uh, to display the video transmitter power level in the on-screen display to figure out what your VTX was. Now, Pavel has sent across this setup here, and this is a really cute way of doing it. This gives us just two power levels that flick when you pass the 200 meter mark. Logic condition zero is set to detect when you fly past that boundary, and then logic condition one is only active once the craft has been armed for five seconds. And then logic condition two is uh, anding the two together, so when it's armed and you're 200, uh, away from home then that logic condition 2 is active and then you have the reverse of that which is not logic condition 2 which is actually set for logic condition 3 so you'd use logic condition 2 for the higher power level and logic condition 3 in global functions to set the lower power level as we did in the last video but I wanted three power levels I wanted a low power level when I'm close in and then for it to ramp as I flew farther away. Again, just be a little bit careful of this because it isn't legal everywhere you are. Uh, 25 milliwatts is the maximum legal power for lots of places. So let me start again and very, very quickly show you what this setup looks like in iNav Configurator. And then what I'm going to do is actually jump on the bench and I'll show you on paper. We'll actually work out how all the logic goes together to, so I can explain what I've done. Now, if you don't want to go through all of the detail, you can just copy down what I've done in this image and just like skip the next five minutes and then pick it up at the global function where we do a quick setup of that. But if you want to understand how these things actually work, then stay with me while we go on the bench. So let me just go through this worksheet and kind of explain what I have put up there because it does look a little bit complicated. These are the three logical functions and how they all work, how the inputs relate to the outputs. And we'll come back to those in a minute. At the moment, we'll just worry about the first three lines of the logic conditions. Now, those are testing whether or not we're 100, 500 or 1000 meters away from home. 
Now, if the logic condition is active or true, I'm going to put a 1. If it's not active, I'm going to put a 0. So this one, logic condition 0, is testing, are we 100 metres away from home? Now, if we're less than 100 metres, that's not true. If we're over 100 metres, that is true. If we're 500 metres away, we're definitely 100 metres or more away from home, similar with 1,000. Next logic condition is number 1. That's testing whether or not we're 500 metres away from home. If we're only 20 metres away, are we 500 metres or more away? Nope. Same with 100. When we go over the 500 metres away from home mark, then this turns on and stays on all the way as we fly further and further away. Last one then is for greater than 1,000 metres. So that's not true when we're close in. 100, 500, but it does become active when we're over 1,000 metres. So those are the basic conditions all sorted. Now this logic here, uh, these logic gates are what are all strung together to make integrated circuits. And although they provide very basic functions on their own, when they're connected together, they can do some pretty amazing things. Now, if you're not familiar with Boolean algebra, as I said at the start, you can skip this whole bit, just copy it down. But hopefully by going through this, it'll help you understand how it all works together. So the first thing we're going to do, logical con logic uh, condition 3 is going to test whether logic condition 0 and 1, these two up here, are uh, using an AND. Now the way AND works is that you only get a 1 out if both of the inputs are 1. So uh, this one, they're both 0, that's going to be a 0. They're not both 1 there. Oh, they are both 1 there, and they are both 1 there. So that's what it looks like. Next one, we're going to AND logical conditions 1 and 2. So it's these two lines this time that we're going to check. So again, the way it works is that we only put a 1 if both of the things that we're looking at are 1. Otherwise, everything is 0. So the AND function, uh, well, everything is 0, so this is going to be a 0. Uh, 1 and a 0, or two zeros here. Okay, that's still going to be 0. That's going to be a 0. Oh, that's going to be a 1, because this time, logical conditions 1 and 2 are both 1. So that's great. So that's a 1. And that is actually what we can use to set the high power. Now, we're going to also uh, NOR. Now, the NOR function is a bit weird. We only put a 1 if both things are 0. If any of the inputs are 1, or both of them are 1, we put a 0. So we're going to uh, NOR logical conditions 3 and 4, which are these two here. So these are the ones we're looking at. So 0 and 0, yep, we get a 1. 0 and 0, yep, we get a 1. 1 and 0, okay, that's a 0. And 1 and 1, ah, that's a 0 too. Now that means we can use this for low power because it turns off as we go higher. The last one is an um, exclusive OR. Now the way this works is that if both things are 0 or both things are 1, we put a 0, otherwise we put a 1. And we're testing uh, 3 and 4 again, these two lines. So, logic um, says that an exclusive OR on 3 and 4, if they're both 0, we get a 0. Still 0 here, get a 0. We've got a 1 and a 0, which gives us a 1. And we've got a 1 and a 1, which gives us a 0. That means we can use him for the mid VTX power. So that's the trick. So we have this piece here, a logical condition 5 is going to select when we have low VTX power. Mid power is going to be set by logic condition 6 and high power is going to be set by logic condition 4. Now we know that, we can go into global functions and set that as we would normally. So hopefully for those of you that kind of stayed with me to kind of fill this in, uh, your brains haven't dribbled out of your ears. Um, this is very complicated stuff at the moment. Hopefully the guys, uh, the developers, will make this into a far easier GUI thing and actually have things like dynamic VTX power as a little table you can fill in with the distances that you want things to turn on and off at and uh, also the power levels that you want INAV to set and be able to maybe turn that on and off um, as a function with a switch would be awesome. But for now, we're kind of having to do it the slightly hard way. Uh, but I know there's lots of others out there who asked about this. 
So now we've got that hard work done. Uh, well, hardish. It just took about seven attempts, and uh, with Pavel kind of pointing out the problems with my logic every time. So thanks again to Pavel for being there to kind of help me figure this out. We know that logic conditions four, five, and six are the ones that we need to put uh, into the global functions to change the three power levels on our video transmitter. Now, again, the, the way that the global function stuff is laid out is that the GF command global function, you need the CLI for this. The first number in the six numbers that you're going to put in is the rule number starting at zero. Uh, so rule number two is actually number one, but you start with, with zero. The second digit is whether or not it's active. So we're going to have a one to say it's turned on rather than a zero. The third number is the logic condition the number that we've got here the four five and six that we've set up to actually trigger the three conditions and then we have the action which in this case is change the vtx power which is three by looking online in the global function documentation and then the operand value or the thing that we're sending to the vtx is going to the power level uh, and again that's going to be depending on whether you're using smart audio or tramp uh, a number between 0 1 2 3 or 0 1 2 3 4 now i'm using smart audio so i'm using 0 1 2 3. so let's assume then that we're going to set mine up so i'm going to have the low power position set to power level zero the mid power position set to power level two and the high power position set to power level three. So the way that it all needs to be laid out is here by my side, actually on the slide. So I'm going to have to put these in one by one. So the first command is going to be global function, rule zero, activated, activating when logic condition five is turned on, change VTX power, which is what the three is for, and then a zero, and then the zero power level, and then zero at the end. The next one I'm going to have to type in is global function rule one. The next one is to say it's active. The next one is to say this is active when logic condition six is turned on. The three means that we are going to be changing the VTX power and then the zero. And then the two is the power level that we want for the VTX and then a zero at the end. And then finally, global function, the last one we're going to set up, global function two this is the next rule we're going to do. Uh, it's activated or turned on, so that's number one. This is for logic condition number four, VTX power number three, zero, and then three is the power level three that's going to be sent. Save all that down and then you're set. Now, there are a couple of issues with this, of course. Now, in Pavel's example, he had something quite smart in that he was also uh, giving it five seconds before everything had armed, before all this burst into life. And you could add that in. There are additional logic conditions to uh, detect when the arming is and then to end the four, five, and six with that arm check in order to get more. Now, at the moment, there's only 16 logic conditions. And in the last version of this, I talked about the fact that you can run out of them really quick. Um, if we did that with the uh, with the arming check, then we would use another four. Uh, so hopefully the INAF developers will also increase the number of logic conditions. So we can do things like dynamic VTX power safely when stuff's armed. And we can also do, th do things like automatically deploy flaps, or maybe uh, when you're within a certain distance from home, have navigation lights on, and when you get further away, turn those off or vice versa. There's loads of things that you can do, but you can very quickly, because one line will only kind of do kind of one operation, you very quickly run out of space. Hopefully, some of you followed along with that. Apologies, this is a quite a complicated subject, but for those of you that uh, kind of managed to follow along with the with me last time, hopefully that explains a little bit more about how you can automate some of this stuff and uh, start to do some pretty clever automated changes on an iNav craft on the fly. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.